It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Tokwe Mark Odige, and with me, as usual, are the ladies. Excellent morning. BC, I'm loving your hair. So Thank today you. I'm putting my own hair, and I'm seeing yours, and I'm <laughs> like, why did I? <laughs> you carried yours for about three weeks now. Yes, I did. Yes, it looks people, beautiful. Yeah. How was your weekend? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jari. Um, I had a very sad, bad weekend. Whoa. And yeah, I don't... I don't like to focus on the negatives. So most times I'm all about positives, positives. I just try to lift myself because I have a lot of people that I believe are looking up to me. So if, I, if I'm down, I, I usually think, yes. And so sometimes I go through things without actually sharing. But this one, aside from all the things that were happening in the home, my tailor, because I was supposed to do a shoot, disappointed me, messed up the clothes. I had to cancel the shoot. I couldn't do it. So I was just a bit depressed for uh, Saturday. I just started lifting myself out yesterday. <laughs> you know, and it's me and everyone you have it even if you go. When you, when you feel you've planned everything and everybody now did themselves. Miss Howard, when the universe thinks she needs to take a book. When the universe <laughs> Oh my God. Meanwhile, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I took that break. How are you doing, Luma? I'm great. How are the kids? Uh, uh, okay, I have one at home, and the other one, she mm. got a go yes. cycling. Oh, wow. Yes. 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 so oh, athletic. Such an athlete. Yes. So much. I was so proud of her. You know, I was, we were all shocked to see her. She was riding a bike I thought it was too big for her age. And then she jumped off from behind and yes. started oh, I was like, but her brother was cheering down and he walking. He ran after he her. He knows his brief clearly. Go <laughs> for <laughs> So and they were hugging and that touched me. I just uh -huh. I'm grateful to God, really. Uh, My bed yeah. was on Sunday. Yeah. Oh. I was still counting down. Please yeah. donate, I'm donate, donate. I'm looking for donors at the mm -hmm. Dockers Cancer Foundation because I want my kids to also celebrate. And those are my kids. They're on the sick bed. They deserve a healthy life they should yeah. be out there running with their mates and mm. cycling and running and you know winning as well so today the cancer childhood cancer i'll be talking about is lymphoma and it's simply that's uh, you know that affects the cells of the immune system yeah and, um, you know it's just Google and i remember you said that people if they donate these children actually have a have chance, a chance life. not that life. is a terminal yeah. illness no. this is the terminality is just on based time. on money almost 99 yes. percent chance of survival amazing mm. let's, let's donate 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 please, please let and i'm looking at the donor whoever <laughs> donates to have lunch an unusual yeah. lunch yeah. 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 <laughs> mariam how was your weekend my weekend was good i did something a bit different this weekend i took myself out I call oh. this solo dating oh, wow. um, yes yeah. so I started my morning quite busy I had a book reading online I had an interview then after that I went for the play at Muzon Center um, what's the title again? It's about the Emir uh, Sanusi. I went for really? that. It was cool. so interesting. His full name is the number. Yes. I think the truth in time that's the name of the play yes beautiful beautiful production and then after that I took myself out to would I say dinner and I went home. Alone. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm happy for I you. I loved it. That's I loved it. Yeah. I just then, realized that in my whole adult life, I don't think I'd ever done that. You know, okay. go out by myself. Ah, so just enjoy. It. Except no, if you are running not. errands, but yeah, like to just take, take myself out, out just hang out I think by it's yourself. Good. We should explore every part yourself. of ourselves. I loved it. Nima will not understand that <laughs> because Nima how is was your weekend? <laughs> my weekend busy. Um, you know, Saturday I actually rested because I had a very, very busy week. Very busy week. So um, we we'll, we'll opened up a new site, and I'm really grateful to God about it. And I'm, I'm just entering a very busy week, so I felt I needed to rest. Yesterday was 10 years anniversary of Pertinence Group. My mentor, um, Sondia Lauren Sheyi, and his co-founder, Wisdom Ezekiel, amazing people. If I cannot tell the story of my real estate journey without these two people, when they mm. see people lifting you, mm. showing you the road, helping you to grow, these are my mentors, and I'm very proud of them. They celebrated 10 years in real estate as a business, and I am a proud, um, I'm a proud ambassador of what Benty. they are doing. Yes, Benty. Um, we'll take a quick break. When we return, 
We'll take this top stories making news in front page review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. Let's start the news um, front page review with The Nation. Major headline. Wiki scam slams Atiku over divide and rule in PDP. Governor Titans hold on reverse chapter. In other news, we have NCDC. Nigeria records 24 cases of monkeypox in one week. Amusa Brume break Commonwealth record. Um, Jay's bank rakes in 2.54 billion naira profit in six months. Umana demands end to oil theft in Niger Delta. Air Force kills terrorist leader. 27 in insurgents neutralized. There's a picture of the governor. The Red Rail project is on course. That's what the picture depicts. We have the governor pointing to the project. And in other news, we have Oya won't return schools to owners, says government. Gone runners arrested. And finally, NDLEA arrest 90-year-old suspects, suspected bandits, drug suppliers at Lagos Airport. So, what are we starting with? A subsidy. Um, FAC demands petroleum, petrol consumption records from NNPC. So, the story goes that Federal Look, um, Account Allocation Committee has asked that NNPC gives a state-to-state -state consumption records of um, consumption of petroleum products with, between, in 2021, the entire year. Mm -hmm. They're asking that they need it per state to... Um, to understand how the NMPC is running, what they call the direct, uh, the mot Motem Subcommittee final report, the one that report submitted to help them understand how it's been uh, consumed. And the NMPC went further to try to explain um, some of their issues. They said that the, the, um, the sinking fund that they had was approved by the president. Uh, Mr. President approved the utilization of the dividend stream and all re uh, recovered outstanding legacy debt from the operations of AFAM 4 and Okpai JV independent power projects by NMPC Gas and Power Investment Company, the NGPIC, for funding of future investment in other projects between 2014 till date. Mm. So some of these f um, figures I read and it was more confusing in the NMPC response to understand how. So presently, the president is the minister for petroleum mm -hmm. and has the final order. And um, the CBN just recently said NMPC has not remitted, remitted. any amount of money to the federal yes. account yeah. from the sale of petroleum products. NMPC in their defense also in this report says that they have been using that to pay subsidy. Mm -hmm. And so they've been overwhelmed. But now they are trying to understand and investigate all the issues that NMPC has, and they're asking how much gong gong are they consuming per state, per state. So I, I think I'm they asked how much gong gong. Mm, yeah, <laughs> so uh, Nigeria recorded uh, 24 new cases of monkeypox in the last week of uh, July. Uh, this is according to the latest epidemiological report of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control (NCDC), and uh, these uh, new cases has made the total number of persons that have contracted the disease between January 1st and July 31st, 157. Now, out of the 24 cases, they said Ondo State has five, Lagos and Kanu three each, Abia, Adamawa, Bayelsa, and Kwara two each, and Delta, Anambra, Gombe, Rivers, and Nasarawa one each. Uh, the NCDC report also showed that between January and July 31st, positive cases increased to 157, and there have been four deaths. Wow. Uh, which was recorded in four states, Lagos, Delta, Ondo, and Akwaibom. And they went ahead to give all... Uh, there's a lot of information here. However, uh, they are saying that they have enhanced um, surveillance at national and subnational levels with improved case detection and reporting. They also said they have two laboratories now that are going to be testing for this new virus called the Marburg disease. Mm -hmm. They said they received information that this has broken out in Ghana. And so these two laboratories are found in National Reference Laboratory in Abuja and the University of Lagos Teaching Hospital Laboratory. And they are saying they are going to try as much as possible to uh, uh, make sure that most of the states will have some of these laboratories so that they can easily start getting samples. It's more like projecting that the Marburg virus will come to Nigeria, Nigeria as well.
Ma yes, so have... I've got military airstrike, skill bandits, um, warlord Abdul Karim boss. So they say Abdul Karim Lawal is his name. He's a well known, notorious um, terrorist, has Good been news. under uh, the radar of our military for some time now, evaded all sorts of uh, you know, attacks against him. But this time, he and 27 of his other foot soldiers were eliminated. Well done to our military. And um, he's well known for being in the Katsina area. He's known for kidnappings, cattle rustling, just so many things, you know, insurgency. And um, this airstrike, uh, they say, came as a result of um, the recent, you know, talks with the presidents and the chiefs of um, air staff and the um, our service chiefs, you know, to put in more work or just change strategy. And so this is the outcome of the change in strategy and momentum. We're so happy because the, he's well known for, you know, there was a particular person, um, a police officer, a Nigerian police area commander, who um, Abdul Karim Bos had uh, claimed to have killed in one of his attacks. So this is good news to our mm. military mm -hmm. and for all of us. We need to acknowledge well. because yeah. the stories of when bandits attack goes viral, yes. but the stories of when Air Force successfully attacks bandits and kills terrorists doesn't go viral mm. as much. We so we on. should talk about um, the successes of the Air Force raid. Um, let me take the story. NDLEA released um, several um, reports from the spokesperson, Femi Babafemi, who said that a 90-year-old um, 90 90 former um, retired soldier was caught with drugs to supply to bandits. This 90-year-old man had 5 kg, 5.1 kg of cannabis. He was caught within the Sokoto area. He was going to supply bandits good. They also caught a pastor, <coughs> Pastor F. Young, who was going to, um, who, who was going to um, take drugs into Cameroon. He was going to take Mkuru Miri into Cameroon about um, um, the crystal meth. <laughs> uh, he was moving it as well. This is still a pastor, if he's doing Yes, it. about 4 kg. <laughs> they also seized many people that are packaging... Um, so these are not with people. They just ship shipments yes. going to India, mm. shipments going to Indonesia, um, Australia, Philippines, from Korea companies. Different sizes of crystal meth were being shipped out. They also found cannabis, 3 kg going to... That's Mpurumi. Mm, yes. Um, the cannabis going to Dubai as well. <coughs> and they caught a man. He's um, um, a, a man from Edo State. His name is Ovia, um, from Ovia Local Government. His name is Ovia. Solo Osamed. Osamide, he was he ingested 41 wraps, wow. you know, of heroin, and he was forced to stool it out. We, we keep taking these stories about NDLE sources mm. so that people cannot be deceived to think they can yeah. escape with what they are doing, because NDLE is up on it, and we must applaud what NDLE is doing. Moving on to the punch, major headline. No going back on Buhari's impeachment, aggrieved lawmakers. Impeachment threats not withdrawn. Insecurity still persists. Deputy Minority Whip says, and um, the big picture, Lagos Rail opens 2023 to transport 500,000 people daily. Mm -hmm. In other news, soldiers, Amoteku, home forest for Lautech student Skila. It's pathetic. A newborn labored in vain. Murdered job seekers, um, job seekers sister speaks. Drivers kill woman, bystander. Hoodlum still diseased phone. That's another sad human interest story. Nigeria needs 21 trillion to bridge housing deficit. That's from Bank of Industry, BOI. Strike. PTA demands federal government ASU parents <coughs> confab. Federal government to implement telecom B rate taxes in 2023. UK Museum to return 72 looted Bini bronzes. Debt servicing to hit 10 trillion naira economies slam federal government so what are Let we me starting start with, with the, um, the good news uk museum to return 72 okay. looted benin bronzes mm. Onima museum and gardens in south east london has agreed to return 72 bronzes looted from us you know nigeria former british colony um, they gave they said that um, parts of the items that would be returned are 12 brass plaques known as Benin bronzes, a brass cockerel altarpiece, ivory brass ceremonial object, brass bells, and a key to the king's palace. These were taken away from us in 1897. 
wow. during the B British military incursion. And, um, you know, uh, on our own part, we're happy to receive this. We are happy that the long conversation has finally, finally got us here. And then in the future, um, the, there's a, you know, sort of an agreement, a, a discussion on loan agreements where um, there will be collaboration between the National Commission for Museums and Monuments and this particular uh, museum, the Honeyman Museums. Just maybe we'll do some exchange ex a few times. New exchange, <laughs> we'll loan them maybe for some exhibitions, but they now know that it is it ours, ours and, and we turn it back home. Us. So it's cool. now for us to, to Plan carry it with pride. Carry it with okay. pride. <laughs> and, okay. with and it. remains yes. there. Uh -huh. Don't hear yeah, that something, that's something to happened hands. to it. Mm -hmm. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we we'll continue with the front page review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still reviewing the front pages and we're in the punch. BC, yeah, you have, have a story. story. Yes, so a yet-to-be-identified woman uh, was crushed to death by the driver of a Toyota Highlander at a rape bus stop in the Obafemi Owode local government area of Ogun State. And they said that she was about uh, crossing the road when she was knocked down. And after that, the victim, you know, sped off. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, uh, according to an eyewitness, he said that... Um, the impact broke her neck and, wow. um, oh and she God. died on the spot. So some uh, commuters in their vehicles decided to chase down this driver, but they couldn't get okay. him. And finally, they had to call the FRSC. And when they got there, they said they were not there, so they couldn't get the plate number of the driver. Oh, so the no. driver is still at large right now, but the woman has been taken to the hospital. Now, residents of the area are saying that uh, they need a pedestrian bridge across that road. There are about five people have died just recently. Yes trying to cross the road. So I think the government needs to do I something I thought they said they stole that. the deceased phone. Yes, immediately his, her phone was taken. Can you imagine? Like those they couldn't yeah. take the picture of no, the number yeah, of the yeah, car, but they could steal, they could steal the phone. The phone. With so the paper, sad. they couldn't reach family members. So sad. So I have how no. 50 billion in Masa. No, 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 that's in Sun. Oh, okay, we're still uh, in Sun. Yes, we're still in Sun. I wanted to take the, um, the real lines. The yes, real, please. The Lagos. You know, it's going to save my corridor. <laughs> uh, so the fourth VC this year, the governor says that the project will now be concluded in 2023. Yeah, the earlier said it will be by the end of 2022, but I guess, you know, contractors and their work. He says that, you know, they're very impressed. And he said something that impressed me. He said they've spent extensive amount of money in terms of compensation to residents that are affected by these um, rails. You know the expansion. Some buildings that I'm aware yes. I knew in the beginning were affected. I've heard of family members who says that they've been waiting forever for their compensation. I love that he has addressed it, and I hope that they ensure that everybody gets their monies. And the red line, according to him, will carry daily 500,000 commuters in and out of that our area, and that alone is compensation. But then, let's look at the roads as well. The old Ojo Road still remains an, a major alternative serving the community where I live, in and out, and it's in a terrible state. Yes, I also think that the island, um, the Lekki Ekwe Express we built, needs a viable alternative road yes. as opposed to that mm -hmm. express because mm -hmm. it's under construction. Let me take the real, real estate industry story. Nigeria needs 21 trillion to bridge the housing deficit. That came from BOI, and the statement was that um, we have about 28 million housing deficit in Nigeria saying that about out of our 206 million persons who live in Nigeria, 95 million live below poverty line and as such, difficult for them to access good homes or their own homes. So the conversation is this fund that we need is to boost development within this sector, saying that we also need to subsidize mortgages. Mortgage is not available to many. The average Nigeria doesn't have access to mortgage mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. um, they want to promote mortgage system and subsidize the interest rates for mortgage to make it more affordable and attractive. Um, they are also wanted, wanted to ease the place of accessing the national housing funds 
it should be more efficient and it should improve access to funds. That's what the BOI stated. And I think many people don't even know there's something called the National Housing Funds. Mm. We should research into it. Government has some policies that are there. Maybe they're not promoting they it, but you should research into it and you will take advantage of it. They should you know, also bring the National Housing Funds mortgage uh, min uh, maximum to a, norm, a reality, uh, realistic, realistic amount yes, now. The limit is terrible compared to the um, um, what is cost of housing outside. Mm. All right, let's take the Daily Sun major headline. Buhari's minister under fire over insecurity, ASU strike, Afeniferi or um, Others say Middle Belt Forum. Others say federal government can't borrow money to fund ASU's position senseless. I really would like to understand this story. Lagos Redline Rail ready first quarter next year, assures Somolu. <clears throat> um, Russia recurring crisis. EU dumps Nigeria in gas supply deal. Sad. Doesn't sound good for us at all. Nigerians dying of hunger. Okowa laments. Nigeria, others face energy transition setback over limited international funding. Military airstrike scale chief terrorist Abdul Karim Boss, 27 others in Katsina. Police kill eight, rescue six kidnapped victim. Pantami emerges first African fellow of Chartered Institute of Security. In other news, 50 billion naira Nimasa floating dock rots away at Naval Dockyard. Nigeria loses 21.5 billion naira annually to neighboring dock facilities. <laughs> Crack in IPOB as group disown purported Biafra in exile government. West African Student Union honors Uguayi. Now, what are we starting with? Major headlines. Okay. Let's do okay, the major, major headlines. Headline. Yes. I want to understand. Yes. So, uh, the Minister of uh, State for Labor, Festus Keyamu, uh, mentioned that uh, security challenges rocking Nigeria is one of the reasons um, ASU has not been able to go back to school. Wow. That, um, you know, this is happening not just in Nigeria, but the insecurity, the inflation, everything is happening across the world. Mm. And he was appealing to parents, that's the Parents uh, Teachers Association, to plead with ASU so that they can go back to school. So the parents now fired back, saying that um, that's according to the National Parent Teacher Association of Nigeria, NAPTAN, saying that they are not the employers of ASU. Uh, ASU was employed by either the state and the federal government, that they don't have any powers to tell ASU to go back to school. That, but they can mediate. But first of all, they need to understand what has been agreed. The federal government has set up different committees. We had the NIMI BRICS uh, committee, which is the most latest uh, committee mm -hmm. that has been set up. They have not come to say this is what we are going to do. So if they have that on the table, then they invite the um, NAPTAN to come to that table. They can now mediate and say, okay, what this is even where... Agreeing to the exactly. last agreement was not complied with. Fantastic. So they said they don't have that power. Um, or uh, Chief of Arewa Consultative Forum, ACF, also fired back, saying that this is just the federal government shifting and dodging their responsibility. You are not supposed to be begging parents to beg ASU. You have had committees, you have agreed to something Talk since to 2009, and you have not been able to meet up to your agreement. So what are you coming to the table with? You keep having committees, committee, committee, and they give recommendations which you do not follow. Are you saying that you have failed? You should come out and say you have failed. Arewa uh, spoke about that. I think Afeni a middle belt forum also. Afeni Ferry, everybody was blowing hot that this is just failure of the government and is showing that the government is not serious in quality in ha quality education. These kids have been home for close to we, six we months can't, now. We can't stop and there talking is no about hope it. Right yes, now. even so, if it is seemingly just to lament and give updates, we'll just keep talking about us. So, Mayam, you're going to take the massa. Yeah, so uh, four years after Nimasa. Um, acquired a 50 billion Nara modular floating dock. Um, the asset is just there, decaying, not doing anything. Um, the, it says since arriving in Nigeria in 2018, the floating dock has remained idle and abandoned, and management is refusing to put it into use, as a, you know, according to why they had bought it mm -hmm. and government's expectations. It's, it's just so I will just let me just read out some of the figures that you know are involved in this. So, first of all, we have the 50 billion that we bought, and then we're losing an estimated potential revenue of 21.5 billion naira annually yeah. to neighboring dock facilities in other countries because we can't do it. Then it says uh, a 3.6 million naira 
is used daily for the for the maintenance of this of uh, something of that, this is that is not in use is not in use then we pay 30,000 naira per day as birthing fees to the Nigerian Naval Holdings Limited so this is something that is supposed to bring us so much profit but it's costing but us yes. costing us and we're losing a lot of money we would like to have the senate the committee senate committee to look into this and investigate why we're wasting so much fund Nima, you going to okay. take the I want to say the EU, um, um, you know stopping conversation with right. us about gas supply. So they've resorted to um, getting pipe, um, ga pipeline gas from Algeria, Azerbaijan, and Norway, instead of, you know, continuing talks with us. And, of course, it's not even hard. The, Why? Remember that the European we, um, can we meet the ambassador supplies? had spoken to the Minister right. for Petroleum, mm -hmm. and, you know, he then, they then gave us hopes, like, you know, it was going to happen. But the former chairman... Society of Petroleum Engineers says that Nigeria is not in the same market position as Russia or Ukraine because we have failed to develop our gas infrastructure. And that summarizes everything. The entire story. We can, they know, can't trust us to meet up. Let's move on to the we, point. We have to borrow to do the investment now. Calls for self-defense louder as Nigerians face terrifying insecurity. Security agencies have lost their bites. That's from experts. More states inaugurate defense outfits. Government fears proliferation of light arms. And then we have the story, widows, ren widows rendered homeless by in-laws cry out for help. Battle Royale in Osho over local government polls, recruitment, loans, others. So somebody wants to take the widow story. Yes, so Please, two widows um, uh, and all their children have been rendered homeless in a mm. community called Eziagbi, Ukwa, community of Afikbo North local government area of Eboi State. Okay. According to the story, their dad or the, their father died. He inherited this house from his grandmother alongside his brother. But recently, his cousin came in, gave them a quit notice, which I don't understand. Mm. You know, put a quit notice on the building and asked them mm. to evict so that he can renovate the building. Went ahead to demolish their section of the building and renovate, and as it even started work on his own side of the, um, the building to renovate. Presently, they are homeless and their properties were also destroyed in that wow. demolition. Wow. That's wickedness. Sitting outside. And the person who ordered the demolition is supposed to be a family member. How did he expect them to survive? I don't understand. Survive? But in the story, mm. they're all calling on government for help, calling on government for help, and again and again. We the people. Oh, Moving on to the Nigerian people. Tribune. Fears over PDP splits into North-South Caucus. Military hairstrike kill bandits. Warlord, we take it that story. NDLE arrest pastors with three drums of Unkuru Miri in Akwai Bomb. We took that as well. APC, Ayatollah hires 11 sons, 25 other lawyers to tackle Adeliki. We took that as well. Exporters lament as cargo spent five months in a Papa Airport, wow. um, Papa Seaport for shipment. Train project Lagos begins passenger carried by January 2023. Security agents launch manhunts for... Killer of Lautech students mm. and Pantami emerges first African fellow of Chartered Institute of. So the National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA, um, are lamenting that uh, because of the unnecessary delays at our ports, when they're exporting, it's affecting, um, you know, their business. So uh, the managing director, Dr. George Mogalu, explained that the delays at the port is why Nigerian exports are being rejected when they get to the foreign countries. Yes. Because by the time they get to foreign countries they, and they are, um, they are looked at, they feel, you know, it looks like they have brought in substandard goods or expired goods. But the truth is that they spend three, two to three months here in Nigeria before they mm. are shipped, which takes a few months before they get to their final destination. Mm. And he's saying that, you know, it there are so many reasons shelf, like why we have this problem. It says everywhere in the world, you know, the waterways, the, the um, inland waterways are, you know, functional. He talked about the initial um, port and needs to be, you know, revamped and business should start going through there. He says rail is very important. But to put all our cargo and everything on the road, the road, it not, spoils the road, it spoils slows the, the economy. Yeah. As in, it's so, such simple it things that we should do. Should be the dock now. Such simple billion, things. That's all we can billion. take on front page review today. <sighs> it's Monday. Let's try and lighten up. God here. bless this country. <laughs> yeah, God yeah, that's, bless Nigeria. That love the country. Yes, we'll take yeah. a break. Amen. When we return, we'll go into the hot topic for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
registered a no mark on her first jump. She is not going to want to do that again here. And oh, that is big, but that was very close to the board. I mean, she looks confident. I feel like she's quite confident there that she that has been a valid jump. And if that is, that just might take the lead from Deborah Aqua of Ghana. Oh, one centimeter. <laughs> Tim, I don't think you could be more perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, it was perfect because she made a little adjustment. There were a couple of little... <laughs> That's amazing. Over the weekend, our female athletes made Nigeria proud again at the just-concluded Commonwealth Games in Birmingham City, United Kingdom. Nigeria won a record-breaking 12 gold medals. Oh, All women. Mm. Like, today, 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 is, today is, our shoulder part is no. very, very high. <laughs> right. today. So today was celebrating <laughs> all the women, our women, who are now pay setters anywhere and everywhere around the world. What are your thoughts on this? Well, Having you to join the conversation, call us on 081-270-53687. Or you can call us on 091-390-76948. Now, ladies, like, I, you know, when you just, there's, it's, it's just, there's something about sports. You know, sport unifies us. Everyone. And I just felt so happy. <laughs> it was more like, what's going on? There were times where we go for these games and we get nothing. Mm. And it's not because we don't have talent, but to now see that our women had the opportunity, had the platform to showcase themselves is just so humbling and joyful moment for everyone. BC, what was, how was this weekend? At least <gasps> out of all the things that happened, this should be <laughs> something for you to smile about. Yes, yes. I was all smiles because it just occurred to me that uh, we can actually begin to put our names in the global map positively. Mm. Every time you hear Nigerians this, Nigerians that, we don't hear the positive sides. So it's true. always uh, somebody has carried drugs, somebody has mm. done this, somebody has done that. But now it still shows that even though it looks like we're struggling a bit, we can still do something. And this for me should make everybody wake up to understand the responsibility that lies with all of us in ensuring that in our little corner, even if I'm not jumping 100 meters here, wherever I find myself that I have to be excellent, I have to put in the work, I have to be dogged, I have to have integrity. As in, I, sh I should put my hand on my chest and say, as a Nigerian, I don't tell lies. Mm. Like, we should be known for good things and we should work on it gradually. We'll get there. Um, I was happy when I saw uh, the punch uh, papers talking about uh, Esse Brume, who won the Commonwealth Games record. Mm -hmm. They said that uh, she broke the Commonwealth Games record on Sunday to clinch the gold medal in the women's long jump. I remember, you know, at the time I was growing up, my father is a coach, he's an athlete, and he wanted me to do all these games. <laughs> I did long jump, high jump. <laughs> I did basketball, I did handball, I did... Uh, a football, I did all of them, it did not work. It was not my thing. But he kept forcing and forcing. And after some point, he just gave up like, I don't think any of my children will take after me. And unfortunately, none of his kids oh, took after it will come back in So as I was looking at I'm like, ah, my father will be sitting down now and be like, ah, ah, this should have been my daughter. Oh. But don't worry, your daughter is still doing well wherever she, <laughs> she is. But as a Nigerian, honestly, this is um, something that should wake everybody up. Let me leave it at that. I'm super double, double, super proud of these ladies. <laughs> They've given me something to look. In the mm. weekend, it was just weddings for me. <laughs> and then I heard my husband increasing the volume and cheering mm. of the parlor. I went to join him, and I was so happy that this is good news. And the other part of the news that was trending online can be forgotten because <laughs> of these ladies. God bless them. Mm. But it must be said that they didn't hop on to, up into this, this week. Mm, mm. If you look at Abosa's story, we shared it the week before, yes. how she had to start early, the number of times she was told no, she was turned down by the country that gave her scholarship eventually, mm. and you know, she kept pushing. That perseverance spirit that we are known for. Mm. I remember in the 90s, like they would say, at Nigeria, no matter where you put Nigeria, you go survive. Yeah. Mm. You know, we are known for persevering spirit. May it come back. May it, this youth I hope that these are their role models now and they learn to persevere. Yeah. And look at the ultimate picture because you'll get it. Mm. No matter what happens, keep at it, you'll get it. This is what these ladies have shown. Esse Brume had a losses. She had a continuous trial. And even this job. Yes, in the last competition. You know? 
She didn't get exactly. Yes. So she didn't doubt silver. herself. Yeah. She walked silver. She kept yes. working. We also had other wins. I think we had the um, relay. Re uh, relay. All the four throw. ladies. Yes, the I, relay. Um, four I think we also did well in weightlifting. It wasn't yeah. exactly. I mean, uh, not exactly sure whether it was gold. We did well. Mm. So we've our team generally at the Commonwealth. Although the Commonwealth is not a game, I really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we're even though we're, we are definitely celebrating our women mm -hmm. and we're so, so proud of them. I'm triply, doubly, you know, proud of them. But also we must recognize that our men too won a bronze as well at the Commonwealth Games. And they said this is the first time in many years yes. since they had won something. So I believe that something the wins the of the women <laughs> inspired and motivated them, Man. you know, to go for... For, for their own win. I'm just, for me, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this and all that women are doing, and I feel that it is the reflection of the gradual change in how we are raising our children, yeah. how we're empowering girl, the girl child. Mm -hmm. There used to be a time that to join sport, a girl child would have to have that conversation of, I don't want to be like a man. I don't want to look like a man. Mm -hmm. Is this, what are you going to do um, instead of getting married, mm. you know, we're more and more allowing our girls to be who they are, what they want, and just pursue their dreams. And then we're seeing the reflection of that in so many things. And so this is, this is just, you know, telling us that in politics and governance as we well, when we encourage up. women, we will see gold medal yes. behavior and performances in that aspect, capacity. in our economy, we have seen it once before, and we'll see it again, you know, in, in our economy, in our politics, in our governance, in our health, in our education. More women, better performances, and just, I'm just so proud of us. So the Look at them. So see how fit and how yes, beautiful really, really they look. Beautiful. Lame, and the last time we had this set of, we, this is a new crop of female athletes. Yes. Before now, we had the Blessed yes. Okabari, mm -hmm. we had yeah. Mary Onyale. Yes. We, this, this, this is a new set and it's very inspiring. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll take in your calls to tell us how this made you feel and how inspired you are about these women. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we've been discussing the joy, you know, the moment of triumph that all Nigerians felt at the Commonwealth Games when the women were getting gold, silver, our men, one of our men got bronze. And I, I remember growing up, I used to love watching. We used to gather like a everybody together. We watch when there's Olympic, one of us sit down, watch opening. We watch the athletics. When they're doing Commonwealth Games, we all gather to watch because it was just the time like we were hopeful to get medals. Mm. But at the point in time, the medals stopped coming, and so Nigerians stopped yes. gathering to watch interest. those things. We lost interest in it. And now, after the um, last one we had with Toby, um, mm, Toby Amusa and as well as um, Esebrume, then Commonwealth came. We saw more people watching. Mm. I'm sure the next game, we would get more people massive. watching. Mm -hmm. That has a ripple effect that we're not noticing, because what happens is people, advertisers, knowing that Nigerians would watch, would sponsor more sporting oh, events. And the sponsorship would also improve more athletic activities mm. by Nigerians. And but I think that's know, something... That, that thing you mentioned now is something that just reminded me of the sort of experiences my father and his team had back in Delta State. So I remember that um, they kept complaining that the government wasn't funding sports mm. that much. They would go for competitions in other states. They barely have a place to sleep. They barely have food to eat. Hmm. I grew up having sports people sleeping all over my sitting room because they are, they are doing something in the stadium, but there's no space, there's no provision. There's no provision for accommodation. And my father had to take care of his own athletes from his own personal funds. Wow. You know? So now that we are beginning to kindle, uh, rekindle our interest in sports and sponsorships will now be coming, I think the government needs to position itself so that these people are better prepared. One of the reasons we don't do so well when we go to the international waters is the fact that we do not have 
that uh, platform to prepare properly. Mm -hmm. When you go outside the country and see how many months it takes people to prepare before yes. a competition, it when it comes to Nigeria, it's just a few weeks. Ah, there's a competition, so so and so. Did we qualify? Are we going? They just start pulling and calling These women and pulling resources. Yes. By themselves. So we and we are amazing. You need to go to these local states and see. Uh, the, the go talents. to the local government, um, sorry, the sports council, and see the talents in that place. But the government is not paying attention to them. We need to do more now exactly. so that we can Let's take a call. We be have, more. <laughs> we have Idris calling from Shokoto. So, Sokoto. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Idris. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? Please go ahead in with fact, your contribution. I'm fine. In fact, you young women are making us proud in Nigeria. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can, can hear you. Okay. I say you women, in fact, you made us proud in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have wiped our tears away. Wow. <laughs> so I want to, I want to, I yes, want so we're to natural say, wipers of tears. Tiri, tiri bota for, for all the women in Nigeria. Yes, so bota, 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 bota. In fact, this is a clear vision that uh, women are taking off the stage. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. And I pray. <laughs> He's listening to the TV. Please don't oh. do that. We can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you so much, Idris. It's, it's, it, can you, see, you know the feeling? Mm -hmm. Maya raised a very, very valid point that there is a change in how we see women. Mm -hmm. There's, that, that's really part of it because even though we had other successful female um, athletes, th there's a new awakening right now that we must acknowledge mm -hmm. in women empowerment. And I know, Nima, you tend to speak for um, this encouragement of the female gender and i'd like to hear your opinion on how this should affect other areas of life mm -hmm. and just sports. yes yeah, not just sports we quickly talk about how we women also contribute to how young girls kill this dream of athletics mm. so i come from a family of athletics i had aunties and your daughter is no, flying yes and she's flying so it's <laughs> so, sort of genetic but i remember my auntie she's now a madam just sitting down she was such a fast runner and then they used to tell her that you look so muscular. You, I also had biceps and I did not even run. <laughs> just from pounding and... You, know, <laughs> you look so muscular and then sort of made her feel like less she, of herself. Yes. And that that is part not of her that could have been, you know, uh, you know, more utilized was killed gradually by herself mm. because she just wanted to look a certain way. Mm. And it was from the women in the family, not yeah. from any... Body outside, it wasn't the men. See the way they you attacked know? Um, so, Serena Williams. Exactly. A lot yeah, because like they felt, man, yes, she's too hard. Yeah, yeah, too. We must now re redefine it and call it fit, fit woman. Yeah. Rather mm -hmm. than, you know, oh, Athletic call woman. it what it is, a yes. fit woman. Because okay. you don't have to do so much, you know, I'm just getting yeah. uh, upper arms now. And it's better, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with, with it. Mm. And it doesn't make you less I, a woman. And, you, and, and you know, you make a very good point because... Um, the way that we look at them now and celebrate them and we're celebrating their body, it reflects so much in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they, 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 this is the time where a lot of women are looking to women who have plastic in their bum mm. and their hips, yeah. you know, and that for them is the definition of beauty. But now we're seeing our another own, kind of yes, another kind of beauty. Beautiful women. Really healthy, fit women. Mm -hmm. They've got all the curves without having to go under the knife. Mm -hmm. But that it takes work. Mm. And, it, and, you know, in your body, to get the sort of body that you want, you would have to put in the work. And it just goes for everything else, that it takes real commitment, dedication, and consistency to finally get the success that you want. If it's look, if it's in beauty, if it's just in politics, governance, whatever it is that you do, and that women can do it. Yes. I just exactly. love that my daughter will be looking at this, mm -hmm. and for her, that is a good example of mm -hmm. what a beautiful woman should look yeah. like. I, 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 I want to quickly say that Aziza Oshola, when she won the Africa for the, yes, so for the optimist time, she keeps collecting she it. Collecting, collecting it, the best female, you know, footballer, African female, female mm. you know, in, the, in Africa, and she appeared, she wore something a, a bit feminine, mm. But you know her style is she really knows scent. She looks <laughs> so beautiful. She looks so beautiful. I just kept looking. I, I remember watching that over and over and yeah. over again just to say 
She looks so beautiful. Can somebody just de use this and define what beauty is? As opposed yes. to, you know, just to buttress what Miriam said about it's this plastic bumble. <laughs> <around. laughs> Let's take a call from Samuel. Samuel has called from Joss. Welcome to the show, Samuel. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the show. Go ahead. You're live. I am a first time caller. Wow. Uh, I, I would really like to say I'm a feminist in code, but I'm one person who appreciates when men are making a thing. Hmm. And I am really happy and <laughs> all the women in Nigeria happy right now. Yeah. We are happy together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Samuel. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the, the fact that you don't need to wait for government. These women, Probably if they waited for government to be the one to sponsor their entire journey, yeah. it probably won't have happened. And there are many people out there right now who feel like, I've gone to do this competition. The government did not pick me up. The government did not choose me. The government didn't see my talent. And because somebody in government didn't see it, that doesn't mean that other people mm -hmm. will not see it. Yeah. Because um, Toby's story, you know, every, all these athletes, they had independent people support them. They had foreign foreign um, coaches also, yeah. pick on them. And that was because they consistently showed up. Not mm -hmm. blaming, not yeah. complaining, so, me, showed me. up. Yes, when yes. they didn't have shoes, yeah. they kept running. Yeah. Mm. When they didn't have everything, when the facility, oh, the stadium yeah. looks horrible. Yeah. They kept showing up. Yes. And then someone so, saw their talent yeah. and then... So we're, we're looking at it individually. Yes, yeah. I am talking country. collectively, no, 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 I get you. yes. So yeah, I get if you. we need to be deliberate mm. about harnessing the talent of our youth. The mm. government has a lot to do. At of least course. the basics. Of yes. course. We can't be waiting Them for people branches, to... No, no, we can't be waiting for uh, um, uh, foreigners to come and pick... Foreign coaches. Come on. <laughs> Let me We're you. celebrating <laughs> the glory now, not mm. be we do yes. this. Yeah. Let me... <laughs> That's That's everybody's sports. claiming to be uh, a The government of sports have really died. Yes. Nobody builds schools anymore and leaves a field. Yeah. another classroom on the field. Lagos schools. You know, Lagos schools, children have to do their inter house sports and then have to even when I was in primary school, we had to leave uh, Clegg and go to Abati Barracks to have a sports event. Mm. You know, schools usually a good school will have, have a sports field. event yes. and have, have, have an all round educational platform for mm. every kind of um, children. We focus so much on academics, we killed and deliberately degraded other areas of education. The countries that took them gave them scholarship on oh, sports ground. Yes. Nigerians only look at this. And I also made this mistake on Saturday when my daughter, when I was saying to the sponsors, because I was a sponsor for the segment, mm. she ran, what it be the price? Mm. So parents do this. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's yes, they're asking thing. what's the price. You know, the what did they give you? Uh, at, already. You're being a mama. <laughs> so there's, there's this parents do. The reward does not have to be immediate. There's there's, there's yeah, good yeah. thing in delayed gratification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can allow that child, grow that child and stop saying to the child, what till you they bring come? What till you they bring come yeah. mm -hmm. at the beginning You're of the You're not leaving a child. Let's take a yes. call from mm -hmm. Roy from Abakaliki. Hey. Welcome to the show, Roy. Hello. I think that we lost that call. My okay, yes, I just want to say, when we talked about, when you mentioned grassroots, at the grassroots, how we're failed, you know, athletes and just sports in general, and that's so true because we hear about Winter Olympics. We have resources that we could have, that we can encourage people at the grassroots to participate um, in the Niger Delta, they always swimming. talk about how much they are really good at swimming because we know they are everywhere. surrounded. Yes, they are surrounded by water. How many schools encourage swimming in As the Niger Delta? Oh. How the, governor the sporting council in the Niger Delta? What what swimming competitions do they have on a monthly, yearly basis? There's so much that you can do. Just to be a minister for sports is not just to go and sit down and be signing papers. You need to be interested Think. first. In Think that, creatively. you know, you have to be interested and encourage people. There was a time, I remember, when we were growing up, we would hear, oh, the only sports that government, Nigerian government, interested in is oh. football. And all the other athletes have to just suffer 
for you know football budget. and you know the truth is you have to do everything together we need to do more we in in plateau we have so many hills people are just casually you know walk up the hills we can do mountain climbing as also as something as a competition yeah. that people come from all of us our country to do it and before long it's a uh, Sports that you export. Cycling used money. to be, mm. yeah. Cycling used to be something that was quite popular on the plateau. You would mm -hmm. see, but I don't hear of it as much anymore. It's not advertised on TV. It's not something that people travel from different parts of Nigeria to go and watch and participate. But people will travel to France for the Tour de France, yeah. mm -hmm. and this is something yeah, that they have wrestling. done for, for no so long. Us. You know, I, I'm, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation in terms of let us let the, we, the ladies of your view will provide government with creative solutions and options to boost the sporting system. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We have Richard all the way from Enugu. Welcome to the show. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Um, Lisa, we have something to be happy about, to be careful yeah. about for, you know, once in a very long time. So uh, congratulations to Nigeria. Congratulations to the ladies. Um, I was really happy watching them. But there's something I want to pick out here. Do you know that while the Commonwealth Games was going on, we had another competition, the under-20 um, Junior World Athletic uh, Championship going oh. on, and Nigeria was not participating. Oh. So when you now find all these other countries like Australia, Canada, and the rest of them winning gold medals in Commonwealth and in the Olympics, you think it's by magic. It's they have exactly. a succession plan mm. of how to bring in young mm. people yeah. into the mainstream um, sport. Yes. We are not doing that. Yes. Yes. Secondly, we should also recognize those, uh, the Paralympians, who yes. also won medals for us. We did celebrate them. And after watching their, their, their performance, I think we should start looking for a different definition for the word disability. Because the so-called able-bodied people couldn't give us um, the medals we were looking for, mm. but these people did us proud. Thank mm. you very much, and I'm happy this morning. Thank, Thank you yeah. so much, so Richard. Much. Yeah. Um, we, we've, we, we know that we've always done well with the Paralympics, very, very Para well. We've had several Nigerian men and women oh, time, yes. do very well, the mm. weightlifting especially. We thrive mm. there. But I wanted us to steer the conversation in a different direction. I feel that... Um, when you know more, you do more. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we blame our leaders because we assume they know all. But they are human beings. They are areas they just know. don't know. They might just not know. If they know, so they probably would do. We should not assume they are wicked people and evil people mm -hmm. that want to just impoverish us. I hope that's not true. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's dig into options. How do we feel that we can revive the sporting part of um, um, our sporting glory of Nigeria? Because sports is a type of intelligence. Mm -hmm. it's, as, it's, it's a viable intelligence. It's, it's the kind of aesthetics. People that are good in sports are just as brilliant as those that are good in academics. It's mm -hmm. a type of intelligence, and we're not acknowledging it enough. So Maya already made a, a fantastic suggestion mm -hmm. in that people within the Niger Delta have water. Many of them, when they are born, they, they just naturally swim. Mm -hmm. But we haven't made it into a skill that can become a sport. Mm -hmm. And, the and bring about development. Bring about development within that area. Get yeah. sponsorship for that yeah. sport within so the area. So you see, there's something that we're doing across Nigeria where only very expensive posh schools have pools, you know, have sporting events. Mm. And then our regular local public schools have nothing. And it does not make sense. Exactly. We're all Nigerians. And then if we want to see a change, we have to make sure that at all this, in all these schools, they are represented equally. Mm -hmm. Pools everywhere. 
Yes, a, a, one school may not be able to afford uh, a, a pool, a but we have community. Yes, but we have yes. community pools abroad. They do it now, mm -hmm. where the schools can go and swim there. We must involve them when we're doing our sports. Inter house sports should not be amongst a t t particular type of school. It should be properly done that Integrated. all schools are involved. You see. Then, whether we like it or not, sponsorship, advertisement, yeah, endorsement, all that has to be you. part of it. We yeah. need to find people, private companies that mm -hmm. would put, uh, um, you know, look into sporting events like that, especially with children. So let me, take, many, this, okay. um, let me take this call from Okereke. Okereke is calling from Kaduna. Oh, we lost oh, the call. We lost the call, yeah. Sorry. So uh, um, for me, I remember um, growing up again, I attended... Um, Asaba Girls Grammar School, it used to be Aglican Girls Grammar School. And I know that we have, uh, like, after school every day, everybody picks their sports, like what you call electives now in mm. these uh, two schools. You pick your sports before you go home, you go to the field, if it's handball you're doing. The school was very big, it was a government uh, school built by the missionary, taken over by government. Had a lab, we had a, a standard tennis. Uh, um, lawn tennis court, we had football field, we had volleyball field, we had basketball, we had everything. And so you pick your sport and you go there. And what uh, these um, government people do is that they come to school in the evenings and they start spotting those children that are doing amazing. I had classmates who had to leave school because they were now beginning to play for the state in their different sports. Mm. We don't have that anymore. And that's not because much. And some of them had to drop by the wayside because government was not equipped enough to handle their needs. So as a sporting person, you still need to go to school. You still need to have your education mm -hmm. properly taken care of. We have ministers of sports who cannot sport anything with pot well, belly they and do all that. They do sports. not have history of sports. You cannot love something you have not participated in. Exactly. You mm -hmm. cannot have a love for something that you don't even know how it means. So mm. you collect money, you sit in a meeting, collect money, and you move. And we're going for a representation outside the country. You have pot belly people going to represent. <laughs> and the people who are doing the BC, work. Don't, before you shatter the table, let me take a call. Man, you don't, me. don't shatter this table. Yes, yeah, Let's take a phone call. Table, table Mike, has, <laughs> <laughs> Mike has called you from Wales. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Yay. Uh, a very good morning to you all. Good morning, Mike. Uh, good morning, Mike. Please, 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 don't, please, don't shatter the table. Don't shatter the table. I'll be calm. Our cup for coffee. All right, uh, just a quick one. You know, you know, uh, Bisi made a statement. She said, you know, when she was like that, and if you cast your mind back, there was a time we have mobile track and field events in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing like there is nothing like mobile track and field event again. Imagine. Maybe they, not. All these things have just eroded down the drain. Now, if you look at it very carefully, this is the time for any wise and sensible politician to use to start creating sporting facilities, yeah. to start getting our youth off the road. This is not the time you say you want to empower youth and you'll be bringing Katena Pep, you'll be bringing mm, Okada, you'll Baru. be bringing all this rubbish. Exactly. Baru. This is mm. the time. This is how you empower sure. youth. And then we'll be doing what? We'll be getting laurels, we'll be getting glories from things like this. Mm. It's, it's very easy, but the only thing our politicians know is just to buy Okada and Katena Pep and give all these guys mm. and call it empowerment. They don't buy it anymore. They'll be able to improve with this. Yeah. Um, great things that these ladies have done for the countries, and also to our Paralympians, we, mm -hmm. we are para, uh, Paralympians and look for what they've done, and we are really happy. At least this is bringing like respite to the kidnapping, the killings, and everything. And we, yeah. and we yeah. are very yeah. appreciated. Thanks. Mm. Thank you, you so Bye. much. I so, love it. Um, the, we, the um, caller was mentioning the fact that we don't have um, Team we Nigeria have... at the. Um, on the 20 Athletic Championship held in Cali, Colombia. But the, the information we've got now is that a team of 19 home-based athletes and two foreign-based athletes and five coaches were in Cali for that competition. Mm. Um, yes. So that, that's just the information that we needed to put out there. Mm. Also, um, this current caller said that we no longer have mobile athletic um, competition we might not know about it because there are many things going on now. No, and it might not be as huge as it used to be before. Um, there are many people still doing little things. We just need to have the support of the government. Um, this, yes, yes, we so. were both, uh, Mayam, you were talking about um, swimming as a viable thing, having mm -hmm. communi community pools. Cycling. Cycling as something climbing. that can happen yeah. mm -hmm. in some communities. BC mentioned how we should have 
Athletes, someone who has had the experience, Definitely. because it, it will show in how well they're they passionate they are, about something. They would put the strength and yeah. energy into what they're doing. I feel that oh, every oh. of this athlete now, th these people are a result of some investment that was done years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And we need to now have a new set of investments, you know, um, sponsorship. We have many telcos. They make, they, we, have t we have companies, mm -hmm. banks. So Usually when you see those athletes abroad, they wear a lot of badges. Brands. They wear yeah. brands. Yeah. They, are all, all these athletes in the next competition, every one of them should be wearing Nigerian badges on their body. Nigerian brands should put money and support them. It's yeah, as simple but, as that. But they have to, brands don't just support because they have so much money they want to throw some away. No, they, they support when they are sure that it's viable because and they I'll need to make this, something. So when the government ones. gives that foundation, yeah, I know brands this is will the come government. in. Today I'm representing yeah. Ryan, so now I have to say, be we the people. Yeah. We the people must do what we can do. Here. Nigerian businesses should support successful sports and um, they athletes. They will not throw money away. Do that. If they are ready on the world stage, they need your money and their money your 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 they have the I'm eyeballs for the, for the world stage yes. the ones that are so, to say a word. so nigerian education we need to change this mindset where teachers make the people who are not academically sound less um, of themselves mm. and you know those who take time to work out i remember back then in command some people take time to work out constantly in the mornings the people that are lining up for competitions even interstate competitions are already on the field working out and they made us seem, made it seem like you know these are these are the less serious students. Mm. Then the government themselves. How many schools we've seen government build schools recently? How many schools are focused on the sports that are even regional or even um, local? You talked about the Niger Delta. Lagos is also a, part, a, 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 part a state behind the, 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 the oceans. But in Lagos schools, you cannot have pools because they know. They cannot secure or you know, have a, 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 a safety guard around the pools, somebody to watch or teach the students. So rather than invest in that core area of um, education, I'm like, let's do the cheaper one. So let them all be in a class Classroom. and box stop. And when the holidays come, the government will also sponsor coding. You know how many Agberos will become fantastic boxers? Yes. Boxers. Uh -huh. Because those Agberos, they are very, very strong. But you did not make school so interesting enough for them. Yeah. To boxing. So you did not make school sports interesting Sports is a very important part of education, whether yeah. we like it or not. And it will show in how you know what we when we become Discipline. adults how we you know how we behave. Yeah. Um, taekwondo, I love Taekwondo so much because it teaches you you know um, the tenets of Taekwondo. They'll tell you integrity, um, perseverance, self control. These are things that you're taught as a child when you're participating in this particular uh, martial arts, and then you learn it and imbibe it. It becomes a part of your everyday life. Yeah. So you cannot take away sporting events and athleticism and everything out of um, athletics, out of education. I'm sure that our leaders have learned. They are inspired as well by these wonderful ladies who made Nigerians proud. And they will do more to encourage sports within our school system and our country at large. All right, we'll take a quick break now. When we come back, we go into the Let's Talk. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Joining us on this segment is the National Coordinator of Congress of University Academics, Dr. Niyi Sumonu. He's a senior lecturer, Department of Physics and Engineering, Physics, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilife. He will be speaking to us on how to revamp our education statement system and also, um, you know, we currently describe our educational system publicly as comatose. So we're going to be discussing on how to revamp this system and how to put an end to the ASU strike. It's, we are tired of talking about ASU strike, and it mm. seems unending. So we want to now dig deep into what the solutions might be. Join, in the, join the conversation by calling us on 081-270-53687, or you can call us on 390-76948. Now, tweets, Doctor, yeah. yes, we'll be taking your tweets too. <laughs> Please tweet at us. We'll take tweets from the previous and this segment right now. We are tired. 
and on behalf of all Nigerian students, <laughs> the association, the National Association of All Nigerian Students, previous and current parents association of students, all of us were tired of ASU strike. And I think that um, we seem to be going around in circles. We've done this strike every time, over and over again. What do you think is the, what are we missing? Well, why can't we get, put an end permanently to this thing? Thank you very much, uh, viewers. Thank you very much, uh, my host. It's nice being here this morning. Yeah. Strike action, as you've rightly put, has been has put up put us actually in a vicious cycle, and we've been on this for around forty years or more. Oh, wow. We have an agreement with the government. Government will renege along the line. There will be threat of strike. The strike will be embarked upon. Then that cycle will be terminated at a point, mm -hmm. there's a resumption, then you start all over again. So um, I want to, with profound respect, quote a, a statement credited to Albert Einstein, that when you do one thing over and over again and expecting a different result, okay. is a form of insanity. Mm -hmm. So we must start thinking outside the box. Mm. We can take it to another level of thinking as if there's no box at all. Mm. And we don't have in short supply people who can actually solve problems in this country with respect to industrial actions in the universities. For example, we are now in the democratic dispensation. We can take advantage of democratic norms to actually stem the tide of strike action. One of it is to intervene at the end of the legislation. When you intervene and you succeed eventually in getting legislations that will make government responsible, that will make it a problem if the government reneges on agreement, then you have a way out in that. You can also look at the intervention of industrial arbitration panel because that in discussions, in arbitration, then certain the certain the decisions can be handed down that will be binding on all parties involved. You can also take the long route, the long route of legal action. Mm. That legal action, if anybody violates, whether the government or the it's union, then it becomes a kind of offense or a contempt of the court. Mm. If that happens, then that can deepen our uh, democracy. So. There are a number of interventions beyond these three I've mentioned that we can bring in to stem this tide of incessant strike action. So the, the main issue um, that we're looking at, no matter how we call it revitalization, memorandum in tw uh, 2009 that has not been you know, answered, IPPIS to UTAS, is the issue of money. Stop. The government is claiming that they do not have money. No matter how you go around, there is no money. There's no, there's no intention to even put in money. Okay. There's no plan to do something about providing money to ensure that these people have their needs. How do you go from there? Even if you take a legal action and they say, we don't have money to pay, who do you hold? I think, th thank you very much for that question. I think your question stemmed from the perspective of the government will have to make 100% provision. Mm. We can look at alternative sources of funding in the Thank university. You. Okay. The <laughs> alternative sources of funding in the university can include endowment. Okay. Can include investments, contracts, can include research grants, can include a number of things that will have that will be different from what government is putting on the table. Mm. It's actually very difficult to also believe that the government does not really have the money. They ask Nigerians to live or stay alive, but what they demonstrate doesn't show mm. that they Flagets. also um, live by what so it is preached. Mm. So in that, um, in that kind of example that I just cited, what we will advocate in the Congress of University Academics will be that discussion, transparent discussion 
honest discussion should be brought on the table. We are all stakeholders. The stakeholders in this sense will then be expanded beyond the government on one side, the unions on the other side. There are other stakeholders. There are parents, they are stakeholders. Students who are stakeholders. There are also experts in university administrations. There are also administrators within the universities who have seen it, who have learned, who have since made some mistakes, who have also in the course of the administration, they've seen some loopholes in what will have made them perform better, but they have uh, some kind of impediment that didn't allow them to do as much as they wanted to do. So we bring all these people on board, have honest discussion. Mm -hmm. And when you put that on the table, when you have honest discussion and you make it so transparent that Nigerians are also stakeholders because when you have progress, in the universities, no nation can rise above its ivory towers. Mm. Yeah. When you have progress in the universities, it will certainly reflect it's in the society. It's a ripple effect. So when you bring all these people on board and you are transparent about the discussion, the era of having discussion and covering it up from Nigerians mm. should be a thing of the past. past. Ah. Nigerians are smart people. They can have information. Process inf once they have information, rather, they process information and they can make informed decisions. decisions. And this transparency will bring what I will call a buy-in. Mm. Where you are transparent, you don't need to stress yourself too much as a mm -hmm. government. You have the buy-in of Nigerians. And if it is going to be a discussion of superior arguments, not majority, mm. when you mm. have superior arguments, something that will progress us, Nigerians will make decisions and will support those decisions that are made, that arise from such meetings. The, the so, key element of these negotiations that you have had, you continue to hammer on, which is sincerity at negotiations, I fear the impossibility of that, not just on the part of government, also on the part of ASO. You know, I fear that when we sit at a table, it's about interest and not mm. sincere people's interest. It's about Asu winning this argument mm. as against government. That's so government, standing. when it's close to elections, just as they did before they came in in 2015, bent over to Asu, promised Asu that there will be a possible change. But recently they're saying you cannot negotiate an impossibility with Asu, basing it on finances. Asu, on the other hand, has plenty of problems, but, you know, new uh, UTAS and IPPISB is the front of the, the highest of their issues that they are arguing about. And then, you know, and in, in one voice, voice they're saying infrastructure within schools. In the same vein, they're saying salaries and increment of salaries for professors and workers. And in between us, so you have the Sanu quarrel about superiority. And how can we really sincerely focus on the sincere interest, which is, of course, the development of the nation in the development human cap of human capacity of the students that graduate from these schools? How can that be the front of it? What if law, what we fail, <laughs> if we fail as a people to have honest conversation, very soon we ruin our university education. Hmm. Very we soon our university education through. will collapse totally. Uh -huh. So we should see it as once the university education collapses, the nation may likely collapse. If we okay. see it as that, we are at a point that we need to reinvent the will. We need a paradigm shift mm. from what we used to do. Mm -hmm. And one key thing that should come out is that honest conversation. We know that on both sides of the divide, mm -hmm. there are mm. issues. When yeah. you go I'm into a meeting with a mindset that you are going to meet your adversary, mm. you don't get anything out of such meeting. Mm. That's, that's you don't get anything out of such meeting. The mm. government also should also be proactive. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till strikes are declared before you know sure. that yes, academics yes. are poorly paid, are poorly remunerated. You don't wait till that time. The inflation and these salaries have stagnated for over 10 years mm -hmm. in the cost the of inflation, this inflation. The cost of living. So the cost of living. So we can also, with respect to legislation that I mentioned the other time, mm -hmm. you can have a legislation that will make it that will tie the salaries or emolument to certain indices that will fluctuate in the system that 
will make the salary improve as those things are improving. Minimum wage, Nko. No, 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 no. No, I mean, I'm, I'm advocating something beyond that. Mm. That is, for example, it's not been discussed through anyway. For example, you look at uh, cost of living. You mm. tie a monument to cost of living. Mm. If last year or two years ago you paid 100,000 naira for um, accommodation per mm -hmm. annum, mm -hmm. and this year you are paying 200,000 naira and you still stay on one salary. Mm. So, just for instance, that will still be discussed more fine-tuned so that we can come out with some okay. kind of informed decision. So, the point I'm making is that if we don't turn back from coming onto the negotiation table with a mind of meeting your adversary, you don't come to the table with a mind of saying, okay, we're all stakeholders, equal stakeholders, mm. and we want progress mm. of this system, Decision. then we'll remain in this vicious circle. Mm. Wow. You know, sometimes I feel that we have overtalked. We have oh. the, the conversations are unending. You know, you are talking about let's sit down, and make sure that the stakeholders all come together. I just feel like we have overtalked any form of conversation. What we need right now is action. And you mentioned something about different ways that universities can raise funds or sort of the self, um, you know, um, they generate revenue for themselves and carry on. And um, that brings to mind for me, TET Fund. This was money that's supposed to be put aside for the development of our universities, infrastructure, and we're not hearing anything. Almost, so the only thing we're hearing is sometimes the mismanagement of these funds, corruption. So who are we going to put in charge of these funds that we're talking about that? The we, is it the government or is it ASU? Uh, these other stakeholders like parents, teachers, and as I say, who would now be in charge? Because it's like we have a Nigerian problem. When whatever we put our hands on, we sort of, you know, spoil it by mismanagement. Read. I think the university administra administrators would do well in trying to oversee this kind of fund, but they are not going to do it in isolation as far as I'm concerned. It's going to be done with respect to other critical stakeholders. And those critical stakeholders will have uh, an oversight and they will be looking at what is happening, how much is being realized, how much is being used for what and for what. And those funds were not just going to be solicited for. Out of the blues, mm. you have strategic plans. Where do you want to go from here to here? What are your strategic plans of moving your university from one point to the other point? What are, when you break it down, what are the things you need here, here, and here? So when you have that, university administrators are in the best position to deploy, to use this. But if you put the element of transparency, transparency has a way of checking bad attitude. Don't as you already way, have that? Yes. I, I do but not think so. we find a way so. to circumvent it. Well, circumventing then, we should... Punish those who circumvent yes. any transparency plan so that start, it will serve as deterrent for others. Let me mm. throw in this quick question. Um, you mentioned the lack of trust. You mentioned the fact that we feel um, the leaders within ASU might feel there's hypocrisy in the government statements about lack of funds because if you're saying you don't have funds to pay us but you're paying yourself, then really... You don't prioritize us, and that might lead to what we seem, some people are calling grandstanding on mm -hmm. the side of ASU. Um, so is it possible to trust this set of leaders? They already have bad blood. There's a lot of history, you know. We've got waters under the bridge that we can't seem to forget between the, the leaders in ASU and the people that are negotiating. So they are coming into the meeting with guns blazing. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to resolve this issue with this current crop of negotiators? Um, actually, I wouldn't want to talk so much about uh, the union so that I, I'm not accused of uh, bias. Okay. Uh, Congress on University Academics is a different academic union. And our worldview, our perspective of how things should be done yes, is what I'm putting across to Nigerians. <coughs> uh, the Congress on University Academics came up as a result of some kind of uh, 
differences within the existing union mm. and ways in which we believe things should be done, especially in a democratic system. So, but the point I will make here is that currently all the critical stakeholders, if we fail to be honest about our conversation, if we fail to go into, onto the table with all sense of, I mean, purpose, then we'll be doing more damage. No, but let me ask good. you a, a direct question. Do you believe that we should still be on strike? Do you believe that this strike is necessary at this point in time? <laughs> Personally, I do not think so. Mm. If the government does what needed to be done, now that we are where we are, you don't get into the water and start complaining of uh, yeah, cold. cold. Now that we're where we are, what are the ways out? Mm -hmm. And the ways out are the suggestions mm -hmm. I've just made. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, this current umpress mm. will hand at the table. I heard, Mar like I, I heard Miriam saying, we have talked too much and what have you. Yes, I agree with you partially. <laughs> yes, we've talked. There can't be too much discussion. Until but we also need it. action. Mm. We also need action on the part of the government. Wants to throw in do, a do you think that one of the reasons we are not hitting any headway is the fact that uh, the leaders who are supposed to be making concrete plans in terms of supporting ASU to get back to school do not have a direct connect to the pains the students are feeling. Uh, do, they don't have children in this system of education. Mm. Not necessarily. Okay. Once they are in government, the shame will be on them. Mm -hmm. So no I, shame in this country. I, the shame will be on the, will be on the government. Be. Should be, but we don't have shame in the country. It Eventually, like when our histories are being written in this period, we will still... It should be in time. I agree with you. Yeah, because yeah, we, we remember some of our leaders and the fact that yes. so when, or when you were in government, your, your, your school was on strike. You. They said it, they, 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 they brought it up with some people that are trying to contest yeah. right What did the legacy do for the people who suffered at the time? So I'm trying concrete... Give time first. Time will give us story, you yep. know, for others not to but copy. The... But the damage has been done. Sure. My question is, how do we avoid this damage from being done to innocent children who are supposed to be... It's already been done. It's done. It's already the done. only thing is, the point we are now, all the critical stakeholders, I keep on saying that, should come to the table with sense Clean of purpose, mm -hmm. with honest mind, yeah. with the fact that there will be compromises on all ends, all? All ends. All ends. Yeah. Yeah. Be not to come. There will be compromise on all ends. As we would say that Otherwise, what we are doing today will come back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. Let me take Mariam's question. Yes. So, um, for me, it's the way forward. You know, we're talking about how, again, universities can generate revenue for itself. And I'm wondering about the cost of education in that regard. Could this be one of the reasons that maybe our universities are... Um, reluctant to look that way because it would mean um, university education is so expensive and that would be unpopular with Nigerians. The way I will come in in that respect would be to say that there should be an expanded discussion of mm -hmm. all stakeholders beyond, beyond these two, the unions on one side and the government. Mm. Those people I listed in the other time at that such meeting or meetings, everybody should put all the cards on the table. Face up. If introduction or tuition is, will be the way to go, it will mm. be crystal clear to everyone concerned. You know, I told you about well, transparency. Yes. This. Mm -hmm. Once so you are transparent about it, yes, parents, students themselves. So, and the beautiful thing about transparency with honesty, with truthfulness is that you have a binding immediately. In fact, the suggestion can even come from those that will pay. Mm. Mm. But as it is now, we have not annexed all the, um, all the resources we have, like so, the endowment, like the research grants. For example, the relationship between the universities and town, that is not being explored as such. Town in this sense, take Lagos, Marshall. for example, you have companies, mm. you have financial institutions, are they supporting any research in the financial department of our university? Have they been asked to? So these are the things we should, I mean, unless explore and see how far that takes us. In, this, in these negotiations, um, can we come aside of the divide? 
for now, let's say the ASU as against government, sell this vision of the possibility because you so as you mentioned, we go to the to the table as as adversaries rather than you know um, as, as, as stakeholders. Can we? Can somebody come and say at this point, this is the white uh, flag and the olive uh, branch and all of that. This is the future. This is the possibility of the future we are talking about here, and this is all about you know giving an holistic balance to everybody, particularly the priority on students, to the graduates, and how you will build a, a nation that will be a nation of our dream, rather than come in angry at, you know, past uh, negotiations, the lack of results and all of that. And then if it's not the us doing that, can the government, on the other hand, because the Minister for State for Labor, his attitude at this issue was annoying and provoking on Twitter. Can we have somebody see the picture and can people on the Congress, uh, what's it, group? Congress of University Academics. Academics. Can you, as a um, um, unbiased middleman, reach out to either side and, you know, make them see this picture? So this is, this is this line of argument that they'll bring in. We're actually reaching so, out to the government in that, in that respect. Second, before you answer that question, let's take Benjamin from Oyo. Good morning. Good morning, Benjamin. Welcome morning. to the show. You are welcome over there. there um, this kind of um, discussion we are making, this, I think, is a very brilliant one. And I think um, this is not the first time there will be as a strike. And with all this, what we are envisaging, according to um, your guest there, that cannot be a fundamental uh, solution to this kind of problem. What I would rather suggest, instead of them pursuing how the money will come out, they should rather pursue maybe uh, this National Assembly to make a law that will ban every public office holder from sending their children to school in abroad. That's the only solution, I think. Because whatever you do now, another government will still come and they can rubbish what you have done. Sure. But when their children are facing the same thing our children are facing, when it's there is a law that bans them from sending their children, and apart from even all Someone the tried to lawyers. push it. Someone tried to push that law, but it was stepped down. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't. You can't, until you get a majority, you cannot create that kind of law. Sir, you were going to answer that question. We're almost out of so, time. Whether we like it or not, we are trying to reach out to the government. We reach out to the government rightly. The other union don't see us as existing, so um, our views do not matter. Yeah. But we reach out to the government with respect to honoring whenever you have agreement, honor the agreement. Once you do that, you bring, you reduce a, a, by a high margin the trust deficit that you have. Mm. And when you are at a table, you have honest discussions, the discussions are transparent, and you reach agreement based on that, you should fulfill everything that you... But, but you, you, what you... if, honestly, now government finds it impossible to honor that agreement they reached? Remember that this agreement is several years old. Before the... The one in the past, crisis. you mean? Yes. yes. They, are already, they are discussing new ones. Oh, they left the 2009. No, 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 not that they left it. Uh, they, with the proviso that they had this problem of implementing it and what have you, the that the resources that we had the other time is not as as much as we have now and stuff like that. So they are trying to have some kind of modifications on what we had in 2009 this year. <sighs> what I'm saying is that that kind of discussion must be honest and must be transparent. Yeah. And once you reach agreement based on that, the government should do, will do well by honoring that agreement in totality. All right, do we have any messages? Um, one of the things that I've heard you say over and over and over again, honesty, transparency, bringing the stakeholders together, mm -hmm. everybody having very open conversation. Yep. And I don't think that anybody, any of the negotiating parties now would say any of what you said is wrong. Um, and so I'm, I'm really hoping that we can have that honest conversation between um, the government as well as 
um, the ASU and involving students and the parents. That is mm. a conversation. The earlier we do that, the better. It's already the Elvis. Your guest left out tuition fees. University education can't be delivered on the cheap. I think I mentioned well, it. You mentioned it. Let me just finish the question. Okay. We are not in the 70s when we have less than 50,000 federal universities. University education used to be free in the UK, but non tuition fee is minimum of £9,250 per annum. I brought the question because of the increasing number of students and the lesser number of infrastructure Resources. to cater to. Yeah. Yeah. How a size government now, beyond all, of the, all that you mentioned, how can we look at, we've always used it, but how are we looking at you know, increasing it? Donations, where you have um, foundations and grants and, and like that, you know, somebody is responsible for a theatre within the university, somebody is investing for certain other infrastructure and getting grants. Why are we not having those things anymore? The vice chancellors. That the administrators of the universities have to roll up their they have to roll up their sleeves and think work. creatively like governors of their own states. Yes, the they vice really have to governor of the sleeves. university. You know, the universities have alum, alumni base. Yeah. Mm, yeah, and that's what they did in um, university teaching hospital in Ibadan. In, in fact, I was about mentioning very but I was just afraid of whether that was has totally been out of One million dollars time. Yes, but totally out of time. And we do have opportunities like this. People will just get more creative. Um, in resolving the problems that they are facing. Um, we do, you know, today is Monday. We have what to be, Bilani. I want to be sure that we have that ready. Okay. All right. So Please. we can have more questions then. We have more time today. I just want to know, do you understand this UTAS IPPIS conversation? Ah, Is it too you, long? Maria. Is there a short answer thank for you. it? Can you break it down? Why can't you Why is UTAS students... better than IPPIS? And why can they not compromise on it? You know. I would like to say the perspective of uh, the Congress of University Academics. Okay. And I would like okay. to speak generally. Software. Mm -hmm. okay. Software, there is no software that is foolproof. Mm -hmm. Number one, there is no software that will not be operated by humans. Softwares are meant once they are, um, once they are made or developed, that's the word, once they are developed, they can, they can be upgraded with time. That's mm -hmm. why you have Microsoft in 1998, yeah. not the one you are using now, now speaking yeah. generally. Yeah. Okay. So, because of the fact that softwares are going to be used by humans, mm -hmm. there are only two types of humans, the good and the bad. <laughs> so softwares that need improvement find itself in the hand of a good guy. Mm. It gets better. You improve on it. Mm -hmm. IPPIs falls in this category. Wow. It has issues. Yeah. It has issues, no doubt about that. But it has potential. But when you have honest conversation about it, it can be improved upon. Okay. Software, any software, good also, find its way into the hands of a bad guy. Think of the financial institutions they use software. <laughs> and we've had in the news people circumventing the software okay. to enrich themselves, you know, to steal. So, if that software finds itself in the hand of a bad guy, you can use it to circumvent the system, to cheat the system, which the, 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 the officer is facing the music now is in the court of law. Yes. We wait until there's a pronouncement on that. Okay. So what I'm saying in essence is it's not the software that is the problem, so to say. Mm. But are you saying that applies to both UTAS and IPPIS? And the software whatsoever. Okay. But the thing is, the challenges, can they be identified? Once they're identified, can they be incorporated into the improvement of the software? If the answer is yes, why do we... So you're saying that we can compromise on that? On the UTAS IPPIS? I think so. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, um, I, I, there's a question I've ticked here since when you spoke about legal action. That's because every agreement that is made by any government is subject to the implementation desire of the government that is on ground. Except there's illegal action and it is being made a law or the Supreme Court says this. Why, have, why are we not saying, is it what? I don't know. I'm not a legal, you know, Nima yeah, is in, that's that? Nima's category. But could, could ASU take the government to court for not fulfilling their arraignment and have a legal battle take place to the point of Supreme Court? And there's a judgment saying, government, implement, and then we are good. Why not? The only thing we will suspect here is that 
the legal process in this country takes awful long time. Mm, well, but and the children will be at home waiting. Eventually, that could save us long term stress. Yes, because if they don't need to be at home. You can once you know that there's a legal action, you can be working knowing that at the end of the day that you have save a, us long term stress. Yes. And it will break this yoke of this vicious cycle. That's so another option. So that we have a legal backing to whatever agreement we have. Thank you so much for your time. It was great having you on yes, the sir. show. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being diplomatic too. You know, you <laughs> tried, but you, you, you hammered on the real issues. We need mm. honesty at the helms of affairs on the negotiation of the ASU strike, and we cannot wait for it to be called off. Thank you, ladies, for today. That's all we can take on the show this Monday. See you all tomorrow. Bye.